Um, uh, good evening. I'm your teacher. This is Ndibwani uh, from 10 Times, a better generation school ministries. And we are here to continue with the word where we left off. We start off with a word of prayer. Let's close our eyes and we pray. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you, Father, for you when your word you are one. We are thankful that, Father, today's word is by no means ordinary. It is not the same as the word you had last week. This is a new word. This is a peculiar word. This is profound. This is relevant for our lives today. I miss the pandemic. I miss the looting. I miss the difficulties that we face. I miss it all, Lord. We say we are thankful that this word is relevant. It is just for this time. And we are thankful that, Father, when we get this word, we get you. We get health. We get wealth. We get good success. We say, we say Father, though we are crushed, though we are perplexed, though, Father, we are hurting, though things may not seem to be going the way we wish them to go, we know that, Father, at the end of the day, you, your promise is, Father, for our lives, they are yes and they are amen. We know that, Father, our momentary troubles, they are passing away. And we know that what awaits us, what is more important, is the eternal glory, the exceeding glory, the greatness, Father, that you have planned and prepared for us. Father, we say we are not moved by what we see, but we move what we see by what we believe. And we believe that, Father, your promises for our lives. They are yes and they amen. Father, I say thank you for this word. I thank you that, Father, our lives, they will no longer be the same. Never, 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 never to the glory and the honor of your name. I know that, Father, as we listen to this word, we are transformed. We move from one level of grace and victory to the other. Whether we feel like it or not, that's what the word says. And we take you at your word because we know that, Father, you and your word, you are one in your word. It is eternal. It is forever. Amen. Um, thank you. Um, without wasting any time, the ministry is headed by Senior Pastor Budeli. Uh, my part is there for, of a teacher. I am Ribwani, as I've uh, said previously. What we are continuing um, on is the new series that we started last week. If you've missed, uh, please go back and get the first one. Start off there. We are talking about the faith men. Uh, we say faith men, M-E-N, because it's not limited to gender. You need not to be a male to be a faith man. But the faith man is both male and female. And why? Because both male and female made in the image and the likeness of God, irrespective of gender. God sees us all as men. Hallelujah. Uh, moving just uh, forward, our key scripture that we've been working on here, I'll start with just to introduce, uh, is John chapter 6, verses 63. I'll read it for you. It reads that, It is the Spirit who gives life, and the flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit, and they are life. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit, and they are life. It adds up um, to what we speak of in the beginning of things that in the image and the likeness of God we have been made. And if we are made in the image and the likeness of God, then we are like God. And God is a believing and speaking spirit. God is a creative spirit. The things that he calls, they be. They follow what God wants them to be. Because what? God is a life-giving spirit. Hence, the scripture here says that it is the spirit who gives life. It is your spirit. You listening to me, you by virtue of being a child of God. It is your spirit that gives life. We try to start and touch how that spirit gives life. If we go back to the beginning, in the beginning of things, uh, the earth was formless and empty. There was chaos there. Things were not going well. In the middle of that chaos... God said, the Spirit said, the Spirit gave life. The Spirit gave life, but the words that the Spirit said, God said, let uh, there be light. That was the very first thing he said, let there be light. And when he said, let there be light, there was light. Why? Because the Spirit gave life to the light. The light was because the Spirit called it to be. 
You are a life-giving spirit yourself, and I want to tell you the very same power that God used when he created the heavens and the earth, the very same power he used when he said, let there be light, it rests in your spirit. If you are made in the image and the express likeness of God, be rest assured that that power, that very creative power, it rests on you. And if you open your mouth as well and you say to your mountain and you say to what you wish to come to pass and you say the life and you give the life and you call things that are, are not to be, you call things to be. You are exercising your heavenly dominion here on earth. You are exercising the will of God here on earth. It says that we continue with creation where God has left it off and we continue with creation by the words that we speak because our spirit is the one that makes the mouth utters. As the word says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The mouth speaks to be that which the, that, that which the heart is full of. Fill your heart with what you want to come to pass. Are you sad? Are you feeling dismayed? You talk it out by the word. The word of God says that we are victorious. We are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. We are lacking nothing. It never said that we will not meet hardships. It never said we will not meet trials of various kinds. It says that through it all, through all of that, God is forever faithful. God is mindful of us. And God is careful enough or mindful enough to perform the word that he said he would perform. This is the life-giving spirit. It's this that we say that our spirit, they give life. The, pres the flesh profits nothing. And we say to whatever we go through, to whatever we live with, we heal it with the words. We say that the words that we speak, they are spirit and they are life. And we know that as we send them out, they will produce the results that God got in the beginning when he sent them out. That Christ God, when he sent out the word, because in that very image, in that very likeness, in that very nature, we have been made. Hallelujah. Repeat after me before we move on to the next scripture. It's our confession for today. Thank you, Father. For it is my spirit that gives life. It is my spirit, Lord that I send out that which you have put in my heart. Out of the abundance of my heart, Lord, I speak things. I speak things to existence. I call things to be. Because, Father, I am made in your image and your likeness. And, Father, I continue with creation where you left it off. Father, I am a life-giving spirit. My situations, my troubles, my hurt, my disappointment, everything that pertains to my life, Lord, it is subject to the words that I call, I, I speak. When I say things, Father, for my life, they come to pass. Father, I am not moved by what I see. I move what I see by the words that I speak. Father, I am of the kingdom of you. And I know that, Father, I am not that one to eat crumbs. I eat from the table. I eat from the table with you, my Father. Because I am continuing where you left off with creation. With my mouth. The things that I call, they be. Whether I feel like it or not, whether I feel down, whether I feel crushed, perplexed, persecuted, hurt, disappointed, impossible as they look, I know that, Father, you are the author and the finisher of my faith. And I know that, Father, through all the hardships, you will always see me through. I say, Father, I missed this pandemic. I speak life for my life. I speak healing for my body. I speak healing for my family. 
I speak healing for my colleagues. I speak healings, Father, for my loved ones. I speak healing, Father, for the nation at large. I know that, Father, you are faithful. I know that you who have promised, Father, is faithful. And I know that you always watch over your word to perform it. Therefore, I am not worried. I am not anxious about anything. But with prayer, petition, and thanksgiving, I make my request known to you. And I know that, Father, they have been met. I am a faith man. I am that of world overcoming faith. I have world overcoming faith. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, amen. Let us continue. I hope I did not get carried away there. I still have something that I wish us to go through. Um, I want to take you through the, the story of Ezekiel. Just to, 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 to make this tie up together as we are wrapping up here. Um, it says the hand oh let, let me give you the, 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 the scripture is Ezekiel 37 I'll take you from verses 1 I will read the hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down the midst of the valley and it was full of bones we're saying that when we see bones, we know there is no more life. It reads further, it says that, He then caused me to pass them all around, and behold, they were very many in, open, in, in the open valley. And indeed, they were very dry. It shows that they were, they were not, they did not have life for a very long time. They were dry initially, they said. It moves on to further say, they were very dry. It shows that there had not been any signs of life there. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O Lord, you know. It reads further in verses 4, it says, Again he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. What did he say? It says, again he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. It reads further, I'll come back here. Thus says the Lord to these bones, surely I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin and put breath in you, and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied, and as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and suddenly rattling, and the bones came together, bone to bone. Indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Also he said to me, Prophesy the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breath, on this slain, that they may live. It reads further. It says, So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came into them, and they lived, and they stood upon their feet, and an exceedingly great army was there. Then he said to me, Son of men, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They indeed say our bones are dry, our hope is lost, ourselves are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord, Behold, O people, my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up 
from your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord, I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you out of the graves. I will put my spirit in you, verses 14, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Lord, I have spoken and I have performed it, says the Lord. What I want you to take here is this, that for your own life, you are a prophet. You call things that are not and they be. You call things to be because you are made in the image and the likeness of God. I want to tell you that today it is of no bearing what somebody says about your life, what is most important and what holds value and what attains the value and what continues is that which you say with your own mouth. If somebody says something negative about you, if somebody says something that you don't believe about your life, then it will never come to be. Whether it be good, whether it be bad, unless you repeat with your own mouth, it will never come to be. Because you yourself are a life-giving spirit and you give life for your life and you call things to be for your own life, nobody can be in your way. Nobody can stand in your way and say, but this one will not succeed because I don't like them. That's not how the things of God work. No. It says that you continue with creation where God has left it off because you're a life-giving spirit. You're made in the express image and the likeness of God. And it means that for your life, you ought not be quiet. You have to be a speaking spirit because it says that it is the Spirit who gives life. And you are a spirit that lives in a body and possesses a soul. So living in a body gives you, uh, affords you the opportunity to open and use that mouth to speak that which your heart is full of. That which you speak will then be. So prophesy for your own life. You are your own prophet in this modern day. You prophesy, you call things that are not to be. Because already you are full of those in your heart. And boy, oh boy, it will be. Be very careful of the things that you say that are negative for your life. Because I promise you they will come to pass. And you won't have anybody to blame but yourself. So be careful. Tame your tongue. Because the tongue is very, very wild. It is destructive. Hence you need to subject it to the spirit. Hence we say, it is the spirit that gives life. And if, if you take your spirit and you subject your body to the spirit, you give the right kind of life for your life. This is not done, but let's make a confession as I wrap up. We'll continue with this uh, next week. Episode 3. Quick confession. Thank you, Father, for my life. Thank you, Father, for everything that pertains to my life. Thank you, Lord, for I am a life-giving spirit. I am a prophet for my own life. I prophesy for my life. I call things that are not, and they be. They obey the sound of my voice. Father, I say, for whatever looks dead, whatever opportunities, Father, you had lined up for me. Whatever, Lord, you have prepared for me, I miss this pandemic. I miss the looting. I miss the chaos. I say, Lord, all the years, all the years that the locusts have eaten, all the years that the locusts have stolen, all the years, Father, that I seem to have lost, I know that, Father, you restore. And you do a great thing always for my life. Father, I move from success to the other. I continue to reign, to rule, and to dominate. I continue to say, Father, I am a life-giving spirit. And I continue with creation where you left it off. I'm not moved by what I see. I moved what I see by what I believe. And therefore I say in my life, Lord, I reign, I rule, and I dominate. 
and I call things and they be because I am a faith man. I am Christ-like and the power that raised Christ from the dead, the power that God used in creation, it rests upon me. It is in my spirit and when I use it, it shall achieve the results that God got in creation, the results that Christ got while he was here on earth. Because I am made in the image and express likeness of God and I am like God and I am a God here on earth and I continue with creation. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank you all. We have exceeded our time greatly. Have yourself a great week. Be even more blessed. We hope this word.